welcome back welcome back this is still why in the morning and it is time for a very great discussion around career because that is something that concerns you in particular we're going to talk about career growth and skill development what exactly does that mean are you tired of where you are do you want to advance in your career well this is a uh, discussion that we're going to have and we have James Sudi in studio to help us with this conversation He's the business development and partnerships lead at Dorian Associates LLP Karibu sana James Asante sana thank you very much for having me Great to have you Great to have you too or rather thank you for having me here Welcome all right yes. yeah. So let's talk about career growth and skill development Yes sir. Uh for when we talk about career growth I think it means different things to different people Yeah How would you explain career growth And let's first of all look at career mm -hmm. as a garden because everybody's career is just like a garden you have an assortment of good energies and good things that you can actually put in your garden mm -hmm. so my understanding of career is not just one because at the end of the day you can do a lot of things in your career so in terms of growth when we talk about growth now it look it, it is the transition from one phase of your life mm -hmm. to the other not necessarily with the intention of you making money but with the intention of you improving yourself okay. and many times we have put career as it's all about making the money mm. all through i want to get a good job to do this and that but even the individual who's trying to challenge youths to ideally improve out there in the in the in the rural area that is their career they don't have to make money out of it but they are improving so there's a purpose to everything you do that is part of your career growth so if you start looking at it from the essence of i am adding value not just to people but to myself and that's part of you growing in your career because mm -hmm. the jobs find you when you're ready so career growth is all about you beginning with yourself and see how you transition going forward but look at it as a garden your career is a garden mm -hmm. in the garden you can have very many flowers very many uh, types of fruits but once you do it that way then you have a possibility of looking at the opportunities that are there than saying i am only fixed to being a doctor mm -hmm. and i cannot progress my career uh, i cannot have any other thing around my career we have yeah. doctors who are chicken farmers we have doctors who are um what do you call them they are guides in national parks but you never know you know <laughs> so you have the ability of putting a lot in that garden so do not hold and constrain yourself oh amazing yeah. uh, i love how you've introduced that because i wanted to ask um there's usually a thin line between you trying to explore your full potential and uh, you know as you've said you can be a doctor and you can still be a farmer you can do so many things but sometimes people spread themselves too thin so where do you know that i am doing i'm overdoing this and i need to really just stick to this yeah so if you can explain that to us the idea of passion comes in because at the end of the day and i can for sure say this there are so many people today not just in Kenya not in Africa not just in the world that are still trying to find their footing and so you find yourself in so many things at the same time mm -hmm. and trying to figure out and maybe that's why we have a new uh idea of career uh development being started at a very early age from primary school so at least you have an idea of a varied uh, range of opportunities out there before you get to that point where you're in university and you have no clue where your career is heading. Mm -hmm. So identify your passion because most of us don't take time to do it. Why? Because we have a system of education mm -hmm. where you're told you need to have finished this class and do very well for you to progress to the next class. Do very well to progress to the next class, to get a good school to go to in high school, to get a good school to go to in university. Mm -hmm. And after that is when you're going to get a good job to do. And so when you find yourself in that particular position whereby you are too confused to do one thing. So you're like, I'm doing a degree because my parents want me to do this degree. Mm -hmm. But then I want to uh, be a DJ. I want to uh, do uh, some bit of... Uh, makeup on TikTok <laughs> or rather I want to uh, do some music so you find yourself in all this but you don't perfect one thing of course they talked about this particular adage that a jack of all trades but a master of none mm -hmm. 
-hmm. uh, which basically I've seen people who have become a master of everything, a jack of none, you know. <laughs> so okay. um, we have to look at it in that particular respect that identify your passion, mm -hmm. know exactly what you want. Your passion doesn't have to make you money, but it can bring in based on how good you are at it. Mm -hmm. With careers, it's all about being good at what you are and being comfortable where you are. And, and so it's important for individuals mm -hmm. to basically uh, accept these are my strengths and this is what I can do better. So identify that. It's not an easy thing because mm -hmm. we've been bombarded with so many things in the world and we are also trying to compete and follow or oh, so-and-so is doing this, I also want to do this. Mm -hmm. So you get confused in between instead of figuring out what it is that basically you're supposed to do. We are all trying to identify our purpose, Yeah. you know? So that is important for us to really appreciate. Okay. So Find your passion. So career is linked to, more, more linked to purpose. Yes. What you're meant to, to and, be. Yes. And uh, also that's linked to passion right. and value. It should bring value to you and totally. to, to others. Yes. So where does the money aspect come in in this current uh, economy? Or, you know, talking to a Kenyan out there, Kenyan youth there, and they have a passion in, let's say, music, something that's not really bringing in money. So where, how do they progress in their career at the same time make money because they need to survive? That's a very good question. And you know, and, and, and the unfortunate thing is that maybe we are already in a system that um, has not really favored um, so much of the personal uh, development or rather the initiatives and uh, talents that maybe the youths are or individuals have. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we need to have a platform and a platform that basically provides you with the opportunity as a youth to be able to grow in your career, in your business, in your aspirations. Mm -hmm. So you find yourself many times increasingly uh, in an environment where you are only uh, bombarded with um, uh, unemployment issues, jobs, uh, people are losing jobs instead of people gaining jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's not enabling because either the systems in place, the government or organizations have not put um, uh, the resources that are required. Let's say, for instance, when companies are closing down, manufacturing companies, for instance, mm -hmm. are closing down, you are aspiring to work in an organization like that, let's say Samia Africa or um, in the mechanical industry, and we don't have a manufacturing firm. So it limits you and you find yourself only uh, left with a few options. Mm -hmm. So the challenge we're having, and, and the thing is this, we have a system that really needs to be revisited okay. in terms of providing for a a very good relationship between the education system and the industrial system. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we go through the education system and then now we join the industry. But mm -hmm. we don't have that particular good, uh, I'll, let me use the word marriage or relationship, a partnership between industry and education. Mm -hmm. And if we had that, then we as youths would have a very proper idea of what it what is expected of us out there. Why should I have to finish university before I get to a job? Mm -hmm. And when I get to that particular job interview, I'm told you do not have five years, ten years experience. Where was I supposed to get the five years or ten years experience mm -hmm. if I did not interact with industry while I was going through my education? Mm -hmm. We've had universities, uh, some of them in Africa and others abroad, that have come up with a system whereby how do we have industry experts uh, source from as early as the first years to work uh, on projects with us, mm -hmm. you know, like Microsoft will partner with Strathmore University or partner with USIU or partner with KU yeah. and say, you know what, let's work together. We will put together a hub where as the IT students are studying or as the biochemistry students are studying, we have this project we're working on. Mm -hmm. So by the time you're done with your four years, you have some industry experience, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you are required to produce that and you are very comfortable and confident. Can we create that confidence in the industry? We don't have it as a moment because all we're doing is study, wait for work. Mm -hmm. There are very many opportunities out there, but we are, our study minds have been- Study and wait. Study and wait. Mm -hmm. And so most of us are waiting and you can't wait. There's so many opportunities to create them. Mm -hmm. How do, how do you create them well in school, in a yes. place where they're not being really provided? Yeah. How do you go out yourself to get these opportunities? Sorry, just repeat that. 
how do you how can a youth send themselves could you do my <laughs> direct translation yeah. uh, out there to get the opportunities when they're not being provided how can they take advantage of the opportunity that they in school that that time to create an experience out of out of it all because at the end of the day uh, when they get to go for an interview they'll be asked for how many years of experience do you have it's it's very simple i think we need to create a culture of um of 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 what do you call it and in, in in very good words it mm -hmm. would be do we have a network of people that we can actually uh derive a lot of uh skills and knowledge from mm -hmm. this is the thing when you're in university there are so many opportunities there are career fairs when even in primary school nowadays we have all these mm -hmm. uh, uh opportunities and events being launched una there's something called kujituma Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you have to, because mm -hmm. you can't wait. So when there's an opportunity for you to do something, when there's an opportunity for you to gain some experience, go for it. You can wait and wait until the world uh, comes to, Depends. yeah, but <laughs> it's not going to come to you. So as soon as you have an opportunity in school to get a, to have a, a mentorship session, create, and you don't have to have one mentor. They can be a mentor for you for your own personal development. Mm -hmm. can be a mentor for you on matters finances. Mm. They can be a mentor for you on matters now career development. You don't have to have one person having everything. Your mentors many times are your ambassadors out there because mm -hmm. they know this That's is true. what you are good at. And your mentors don't necessarily also have to be elderly people. Of course, there are some levels you will need someone who's elderly because you need the experience they have gained. Mm. But they could be also your peers. Okay. We create a network around ourselves. Maybe our parents had a very good and close-knit network. That's why when your parent has an issue, their friends are always there. Mm -hmm. They're there because they created a very good support system. Mm -hmm. Today, even in our own small circles as youths, we need to have that particular small circle of friends that you can always not just go partying with, mm -hmm. not just go for road trips with, but challenge each other to uh, see the opportunities that abound, you mm -hmm. know, um, to invest together, um, to start a small initiative together. Your career sometimes just springs from um, a small chama thing that you started. That um, maybe you started a bird watching uh, thing, and before you realize, National Geographic are like, these guys are doing some very good job okay. in Nairobi <laughs> because you've actually put yourself out there, mm -hmm. and you never know that is your career. But mm -hmm. maybe you were studying engineering. You see, you're still an engineer and now you are an expert in bad watching. Bad watching. But you do not know. <laughs> you have to create it. You have to really be, mm -hmm. um, make yourself available. Yeah. Make yourself available. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make yourself available. Yeah. And it also speaks about the environment that you have, the people that you have around you. Yes. They also uh, influence the person that you're going to become. Yeah. Let's now talk about skill development. Where does it come in when we talk about career growth? Now, this is a continuous process. Mm -hmm. Skills development start at a very early age. You always acquire different things as you're growing up as a child. Mm -hmm. You just do not realize it because at that point in time, you're just uh, picking things from the world. At a very early age when you're growing, mm -hmm. you, you, you learn to call mama or baba. You learn to, you're taught how to, to clean dishes. You're taught how to uh, relate with people. You're mm -hmm. taught how not to be uh, uh, a nuance next to visitors. You know, you're learning a lot of things. This skills development is not just so much about mm -hmm. me gaining uh, uh, copywriting skills or uh, me learning how to uh, let's go fishing or that. It's it's all about. Mm -hmm. it, it comes from within. Okay. It comes from within, and that pushes you to basically uh, go to the things that you love. Mm -hmm. And skills development don't necessarily come from you sitting in a class or going online and learning something from YouTube. Mm -hmm. It could be just your environment. You could pick a few things that basically, and when you're, when, you, when, you're, when you're developing yourself, it's all about ideas. It's all about picking ideas. You can go for all the computer packages, but figure out that guys have been doing it this way. Why can't we change the process of how this is? Why should I finish a mm -hmm. university and go for computer packages? Why can't I? for an engineering course that is, you know, it's Actually. part of your skills development. Mm -hmm. it's, it comes from within as an individual. You don't, you don't just wake up one day and then you start developing your skills. Okay. It grows 
from an early age. There are kids today who are pastors. Mm. Okay, <laughs> very young kids, you know, yeah. and uh, they're doing quite a bit of what, um, and, and it's impressive to see them. Did right. they uh, have to wait until they were grown to learn it? No, mm -hmm. it just came out. Also, like the same thing, we go back to the environment. Mm -hmm. You learn things as you grow and as you go on with your life. Okay. There are those that you intentionally learn, and there are those that basically come without you having to even think. Mm -hmm. You observing your parents. You can decide to be a doctor like your dad from a very early age. You can decide that you don't want to be anything close to what your parents are doing. Mm -hmm. Now you choose your path and you start growing, and it's open. Okay. You're not only f uh, fixated on your industry, or, or basically if you did IT, you want to just do skills development in IT, you could learn how to make soap, mm -hmm. because you felt this economy is just too hard for me. Can I try soap? Yeah. We've seen people actually doing ma roasting maize with master's degrees. Mm -hmm. It's a skill, and you don't choose. The problem is that sometimes we're very choosy, do not choose. Mm -hmm. If you have an opportunity to learn something, go for it. Just do it. Okay. And don't worry too much about th the fact that people are going to say this or that. I think we also have a lot of that happening in the world today. Mm. So what will people say about me? Why am I not like so-and-so? Pick a skill. Pick skills. I talked about career being a garden. Yeah. Pick skills. Mm -hmm. Give yourself time to learn. Okay. And there are very simple skills out here that will make you maybe a billionaire in future because you do not know where you're going to be. Yeah. Since we don't know about tomorrow, we work with today. So mm -hmm. what can you do today? Learn every single day, learn something. Even if it's just a word in the dictionary, that's a skill. It's, it's a skill. It's a skill. Something. Because people do not have vocabulary, you <laughs> yeah. know? It's a skill. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. So it's something that you learn constantly, constantly. continuously. Yeah. All right. Now with the changing, ch times are changing. Yeah. And uh, workplace, uh, the job market in Kenya is also changing. Yeah. What are some of the trends in the workplace in Kenya, you know, particularly, uh, maybe even in the world, but what are some of the changing trends that people should be aware of in the industry? Of course, there's a lot happening in uh, the tech industry. That's mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and I think we focus so much on tech. We've forgotten about um, mm -hmm. uh, the few things that we have in the rural areas to do. Uh, like? Um, farming is, is, is good, it's important. Okay. Of course, right now we are having people farming under the sea. It's something that's coming up. It's very expensive <laughs> too, yeah. but it will actually rise. But there's always something new coming up. And so we, since we don't know about tomorrow, we work with today. Mm -hmm. So some of the skills that are really cutting across, we have AI has been a very uh, key thing and trend. And of course, we have so many organizations right now looking for AI experts in various things, mm -hmm. be it software developers, uh, be it uh, AI, uh, uh, people who can manage governance for AI ethics. Mm -hmm. But the biggest industries right now, I will say for sure that if you crack, you are good at what you do. I mean, you actually have things going. Mm -hmm. It's not so much, I wouldn't say tech, because tech is there. It's there for the taking. Everyone is taking. It can be flooded and by anyone. ChatGPT has come. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I could sit and tell ChatGPT to do everything. So do we think we really want uh, to compete in that area with ChatGPT? No. Mm -hmm. The service industry is very key. It's growing. Uh, we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of things in the medical uh, sector. I mean, a lot of things that are now happening in Africa with all these medical issues and problems we are having. You need to be in tune with that. That's why we have so many, uh, what do you call them, uh, care specialists mm -hmm. coming up. Technology does not, cannot, cannot really does not have emotions. It can't really replace people. It can't people. read people. It can't do all that. But if you can be a psychologist, a psychologist mm -hmm. uh, organizations will be looking for you because there's so many mental health issues in companies today. Mm -hmm. If you just position yourself very well, you're not looking at it that way, but those are areas people need to focus on and at least have that as a skill. Mm -hmm. Even with CEOs need to have skills, emotional intelligence, appreciate and know how. Um, your employees are, what is it that is affecting them? Uh, psych uh, therapists will be needed in organization today, trust me. Mm -hmm. and, and the youths might be looking at uh, uh, their cash cows, even in careers. Going to TikTok and doing makeup and having views, and maybe hopefully that pays, 
that's a cash cow. That's something you can do effortlessly. Okay. Look for some challenges also for yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, learn a new skill. Learn a new skill in the areas of even coding. Coding is important because right now it's becoming a key thing, I've realized. Mm -hmm. So that's part of tech that basically will always be there. Um, uh, right now we're going to virtual reality. Issues of virtual reality are coming. Mm -hmm. But I go back to the rural area and say agriculture because we're not growing. We can have all this tech, but we're not eating. <laughs> we will die. We need food at the end yeah, of the day. We need food. Okay. So we need to be able to sustain the technology. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to eat well. It's not going to do that. So we need to provide us with that. Mm -hmm. And organic. So if you can be an organic uh, farmer, farmer. You, trust me, in the next couple of years, we will need you. Mm -hmm. In the next few maybe months, depending on how you do it, we will need you. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, have a group of people that you can support and work together. Let's not have this culture of, I am roasting maize here, my neighbor <laughs> is also roasting maize, <laughs> and the other neighbor is roasting maize. Let me roast maize, you supply the maize. Mm -hmm. You bring the kachumbari, okay. you know, and you bring the packaging. Mm -hmm. Working but we are together. there. It's an ecosystem we are creating. Mm. So if I'm selling phones, then let there be a repair shop next to these phones. Let there be uh, someone else who's basically uh, f fixing uh, other things on the phones of providing accessories to my phones. Mm -hmm. How do we change that culture is something that we need to think through. Okay. We have already a certain business culture of mm -hmm. copycat, copycat, copycat. It you means it's working for Someone them. has opened a site, but yes. it's doing well, so you yeah. decide to open it. So those. we need to stop that and think about how unique a service can I offer for this. But at the same time also, the vendor should accept. We also need to basically start accepting each other in mm -hmm. our own ways, because that's the other thing, we're too selfish. Okay. We should stop being selfish. We should. It's internal. It's not something the government is going to do. It's not something that uh, we're going to tell you to do this. It's, it's, it's something, something that is ingrained. We need to develop that culture mm. uh, of, of, of working together and embracing that national cohesion and seeing how, it, because trust me, if we rely so much on, on, on the government and especially what's working, everybody have their own interests. So do you have your interests as an individual? Mm -hmm. Can you look for your interests and work towards meeting them? Because no one is going to feed that find an interest to group and work with also. Mm -hmm. So it's important to look at it that way. Okay. So there's so many opportunities, just look out for them. Don't just say it's the IT sector, there's the agricultural sector, there's actually the hospitality sector which is coming up. Mm -hmm. Find ways, there's the NGOs, because we have so many things also. Uh, some parents are grappling with mm -hmm. disabled children. Mm -hmm. Find ways of actually how you can actually meet some of these Need. challenges, the oh. needs. Um, let's not look very far and say this is flashy. Flashy is not so much what is going to give you and we're looking for happiness. Yeah. Do you think the money is happiness? Not necessarily. Always, I mean, you're peace. Yeah. You can have all the money but no peace and you always keep on looking at your shoulders whether someone is on your back you yeah. know, because you have all the money. No, just look for your peace. And live within your means also as you scale up. Okay, yeah. so basically also what you're saying is look for a problem that's there and be, create a solution to it. That's the thing. All right. So if you're looking at trends, you will go with the trends and forget to fix your problems. Because mm -hmm. we can go with the trends. True Canada does not need AI. Uh -huh. Marsabin may not need it. Mm -hmm. Countries, uh, quantities that have a lot of wiring uh, challenges may not need tech. They might need an ambassador for peace. Mm -hmm. And with that, you find a lot of support going forward. Yeah. So good that we are in counties now in the country so each county has something to provide for another county so see how basically you can work with people there mm -hmm. to do that of course the system may not favor you because the biggest challenge we have of people are always saying that I need to know someone I need to have a godfather I need to have this mm -hmm. um, stop the mentality of godfathers don't because when the godfather is not there then you don't have your career if you base your career on a godfather or someone who's you know if they're not in that position anymore it means your job is You're in done. the line. Mm -hmm. So sustainability of your job, of your careers is also very important. 
Okay. Yeah. Speaking of godfathers, now what's the difference between having a godfather and networking? Because they also say that most opportunities, most uh, job opportunities are not really advertised out there. It's the people that you know, the networks that you have in there. So what, where do we draw the line between having a godfather and having networks? Because I think there's, uh, there isn't a clear understanding. It's a huge problem we've created. Um, it's already there and it's a mentality that needs to change. Um, having a godfather is your own dad can be your godfather mm -hmm. since he's a, maybe a, 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 CEO. a CEO somewhere or a manager somewhere and manage to get you on board. Mm -hmm. But they say getting to the door is one thing. Your performance matters. You can prove people wrong or you can prove people right that you are only here because of someone. Networking is different. It's not necessarily just having a one support system, like it's your dad or it's your uncle. It's networking is, is you've spread your, your, your wings. Mm -hmm. You have so many opportunities and options around you. Um, since you've been chatting with someone, they know exactly what you're good at. They don't have to call you for an opportunity for the sake of you making the money, but because they know you're good at what you do and they really want to grow you. Mm -hmm. So networking platforms give you a variety of opportunities and options and gives you the room to think out of the box. Mm -hmm. Having a godfather, you're only focused on that. It's, it's <laughs> everything. It's, this is, I, I can't do anything <laughs> without them. This person. Yeah, and it, it, it makes you so dependable instead of make you independent to do your things. Mm. At times you might find you have someone who sponsored you and they want you to do things the way, because they sponsored you. Mm. So you are limited in your growth. Networks give you growth. Yeah. They give you opportunity. They give you a reason to live. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're with your a good uh, sponsor or that, uh, you sometimes find yourself wanting to just please them so that you keep on mm -hmm. staying okay. on course, keep on uh, getting that. You don't even have growth at that point in time because they, they, if they choose that you're going to be in that position, you're just going to be there because that's what you wanted mm -hmm. to be put there. So you stay in your Yeah, you don't think zone. about getting beyond that because then you're like, a, maybe people will not be be comfortable with my skills. Mm -hmm. uh, people will not see me this. I need to wait for them, for my godfather, to tell me whether it's right for me to. So don't hold yourself with that. It needs to change. And that's why we need to create our own small networks as youths also. Because mm -hmm. some youths are already working. Why can't you pull another youth yeah. when you have an opportunity? Mm -hmm. When you have an, an activity going on somewhere, Le and it's, it's, it's going to be uh, a, a learning experience, pull your friends, pull share, mm -hmm. give them that information. Mm -hmm. You are here today, tomorrow you're here, or you're here. So, and by the time you're here and you pull someone at this point in time, they'll be like, ah, you, you, you pulled me up. Create yeah. those networks as you wait for godfathers because they pass mm -hmm. on and they go. Uh, then they leave you without having a good network of people to support you and engage. So, build your networks amongst yourselves. Mm. It helps you guys grow. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Creating a, a system where we can help each you other. You need to do that. All right. Now, uh, in a system where there's a lot of unemployment and also those that are in, in employment are constantly looking for other job opportunities, how do you make sure that you stand out in a position that you're, you are in in an organization already? you need to be very proactive. Now, mm -hmm. being reactive and being proactive. Reactive is when something has already happened and now you're coming on board uh, or you're, you're reacting to it. Mm -hmm. And then there is proactiveness whereby you suggest things, you are influencing a lot of change in the organization or you're just being also stubborn. Stubbornness is not a bad thing. There's stubbornness that is just stubborn and you are just not making everybody progress. But there's stubborn that basically brings a lot of change in an organization because of the way they think, the way they work. Mm -hmm. Find your place in the organization. Many times we don't find our place. We get a job and we are there, we're comfortable. We are not building um, a rapport with others. We are there just to meet the tasks that we've been given. Mm -hmm. We are not willing to go over and beyond. Why? Because see, they're paying me for this. <laughs> this I'm is going to JD. do what they're going to pay me for. <laughs> Forget about that. And that's where now we come to that point. We stop working for just the money and the moolah. The moolah will always come. Do you want it 
to be that you're only constrained with that particular salary that you got or do you want to have progress or growth? Many times in an organization, they give you six months, mm -hmm. three months, six months probation. What are you doing with that time? Learn the organization. Take time to even learn the organization, even if it's just for six months. But at the same time, try and deliver. You will, you will fail, you will gain, but celebrate your failures. Mm -hmm. Many times when you don't celebrate our failures, we don't see our progress. You'll always see yourself stagnant. Failures help you realize that you need to improve and go beyond. Okay. But create sustainable relationships in the organization. Don't be a loner. You can be an introvert, but don't be a loner. Okay. Um, you can find other introverts to read books together. These are things that you do that may not necessarily make sense. Mm -hmm. But when someone is sitting in a boardroom, they know, oh, Nani joined us the other day and we read books with. Put yourself in people's minds. Okay. If you are in people's minds, mm -hmm. someone will speak about you in some closed door without you realizing. Mm -hmm. The CEO might be having a meeting and they want to hire someone new. And then one of the managers knows they've been interacting with you and they know this. But why are we going far and so and so we is have... good at this? Mm -hmm. So put yourself out there. Okay. Yeah. So let someone else speak at you in closed door. Then you also get good friends who speak about you. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. I like that. Don't be a, you can be an introvert, but don't be a loner. There's yes. a difference between yes. the two. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. very interesting. And how does the workplace culture influence your career growth? It does a lot. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. As guys in the consultancy area field and mm -hmm. in that we say that it eats strategy for breakfast. So okay. a good culture can destroy the morale. Uh, a good culture can build the morale mm -hmm. of employees and, and, and of course also yield productivity in the organization because there's a form of connectedness, there's mm -hmm. a form of family, there's a form of teamwork, there's a form of growth. People are seeing opportunities and they're contributing. A bad culture lessens your level of productivity. It discourages even from waking up in the morning. Mm, you know, you're true. like, do I want to go to work? Can I call in sick? today <laughs> you know yeah uh, you look for all manner of excuses and and so that's where we, we we need to realize that proper cultures and the culture also starts from the top we always say it stems from the top do your research also if, if it's a career opportunity for you do your research about the organization mm -hmm. get to learn about how they do things how is they how they how do they take leaves for instance how do they take do you have a proper medical cover? All this culture speaks to so many small things in the organization uh, from the reception. Sometimes, also, I, I basically look at this when I walk into organizations sometimes. Mm -hmm. How are you treated by the watchman at the gate? It talks about the organization. It talks about culture. the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so the security personnel, the cleaners, and also how do you treat them? How do you relate? I mean, do you say hi? And how do they respond? Uh, are people just silent in that organization? You're there for an interview or you're there to just have a meeting and, uh -huh. and there's a whole lot of people are disconnected so much from each other. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that um, you also look at the culture of the organization before. You will not get everything, but the most important things is how do people relate? So um, don't We go so much on, on the issue of where is the money <laughs> and how much money. And sometimes you go for an interview thinking about how much you're going to quote yeah. <laughs> than what you're going to go through I mean, in terms of the questions and how you're going to articulate some of these things. Mm -hmm. So think about the culture. In fact, the questions you ask at the end of the interview and they ask you, one of the good questions to ask about the culture of the organization. Okay. It's good for you to know. It, it shocks the other side of the, of the panel mm -hmm. that there's something you value about the environment that you're going to be working in. Uh -huh. So culture has a very big role to play in career progression. Mm -hmm. If you don't find yourself fitting in that place, Please, just move. Mm. It helps you basically realize other opportunities out there. Okay. But when you stay somewhere, you don't realize opportunities. It doesn't open you up. Okay. And not all of us are good at finding ideas, but when they shock your system, mm -hmm. you actually find a way of actually progressing on other things. So don't lock yourself when the culture is not right. Okay. It's important. Mm. Okay, it's very important. Something very key to look out for when you're looking for a new job You need to have that. Peace of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, we are all looking at uh, what, what, what makes me uh, want to go to work every day. Mm -hmm. So it's important. It's okay. Important, yeah. Be before we close this conversation, because uh, we are short of time, yeah. I, I want you to speak on, um, on self-belief, mm -hmm. because some people have a lot of potential. Uh, but they don't really believe in themselves. And mm. there's something that 
imposter imposter syndrome. syndrome. Yeah. yeah. So how can someone break away from this uh, very quickly as we wrap this up? Self belief is uh, is of course a key ingredient as an individual. Um, mm -hmm. You have first of all to believe in yourself. It's hard to believe in ourselves because we have put a lot of uh, what do you call it? Um, we've told ourselves that someone has to approve of me. Nobody has to just approve of you. You have to basically go out and do your things. Be as weird as you can. Mm -hmm. Someone will identify your weirdness <laughs> and find something good for you to do in terms of that weirdness. So the challenge we have is being ourselves. And that's, 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 a, that's a skill also in itself. Mm -hmm. Being yourself, self-belief is something you tell yourself every day when you wake up in the morning that I am, I am, I am better than yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, you can add I am God's child. You can do all those things. Yeah. But you need to be your own cheering squad. Mm -hmm. If you're not your own cheering squad, you can't wait for other people to cheer you up. Okay. You have to start from yourself. So getting out there uh, and getting job interviews, you go there with only one intention, to win. Mm -hmm. If you go there with doubts on whether this is a perfect job for you or not, then you shouldn't have been there in the first place. So go there with one thing. I'm going to win. But also prepare. Imposter syndrome many times is because you're not very prepared. Mm -hmm. we, we, we want a more Kenya for interviews. We want uh, it just to be as easy as we want. You cannot define how the interview is going to be. Mm -hmm. But you can go with what it is that you want to really. Okay. You can turn the interview around. around. For your good. But figure it out. It's something you also learn mm -hmm. as time goes by. Right. So believing in yourself is... You keep on telling yourself, even if you slept in the streets, the people who just kept on telling themselves that this is not mine, mm -hmm. this is not mine, this is a, this is, this is a, a, a suffering that I have to go through for a while, but this is not me. Mm -hmm. So try your best as an individual to keep on telling yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and argue with yourself, talk to yourself, mm -hmm. pray about it. Sometimes we don't pray so much about these things, but you have to pray. We don't be, if you don't believe in prayer, try because it works. It works. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It helps you a lot get out of the all confusion that you have, mm -hmm. um, and then talk to people that you know build you. Mm -hmm. If you're going for an interview, talk to someone. Give a call to someone. Don't say that I can do this. Call someone. As mm -hmm. for telling yourself that you can do it, call someone and say, "Brother, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to go about it. Yeah. Pray for me, or basically give me some little bit of advice." Mm -hmm. So that's how you're supposed to do it. Wow, amazing! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, James, for such amazing insights yeah. around this topic. Right. Where can people get you on social media? And maybe you can give if there's one thing that someone should take, one or two things that someone should take from this conversation. What should those be? And this is your camera. You can look directly. Oh, great. Uh, thank you. Um, it's good to be here. And thanks so much to all the viewers. I mean, it's important to know that, um, like I mentioned, the career is like a garden. So nurture it and grow it. I work for an organization called Dorian Associates. And it's important for me to actually mention this here because we are legal and governance experts in the areas of corporate governance. Mm -hmm. And so we do company secretarial board evaluation. So dealing a lot with... Uh, individuals at that particular level and uh, this basically will be your networks also to build and grow even as you're growing uh, in your own careers um, the most important thing to know is that as you're growing in your own careers is to be one more importantly just self-determined and so so like an ego because we tend to hold ourselves back every other time. Try as many new things as you can until you actually are able to get your thing going. So do not wait for mm -hmm. your papers to take you to places. Go out to just flourish because at the end of the day, uh, you have yourself to blame if you do not actually uh, grow. And if you wait for your parents or your friends or your colleagues at work to do this, it will not happen. People look for the potential in you, but you until you show them, nobody's going to know that you exist. Wow. So just shine as a diamond. Wow. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, James, once again. Yeah. All right, that has been James Studios. He, as he said, is the business development and partnerships lead at Dorian Associates. And he's been talking to us about career growth and skill development. I hope you've taken something from it. Mine is that my career is like a garden. And what I need to do is soar. 
go out there try every other day be better than you are today all right so uh that's where we put a cap on it but more is to come val is coming back with youth and politics a very interesting discussion that you want to be a part of remember the hashtag is why in the morning at y254 channel so we're going to take a short break uh stay with us